um, which we were, uh, noob master, noob monster, sorry, I keep saying noob master, noob monster, I'd love to hear your take on video games and military influence sometimes. Really, really toxic. As it turns out, the United States military has a weird obsession with getting themselves into video games. Um, I don't know, I don't agree with that piece, Kraft. Um, it, the military preys on poor people and especially right now, you could be sent to war. Now, I support all vets, obviously. Vets, in my opinion, are people who've been through a lot and deserve help, and and I have no no ill will towards, um, towards vets. However, I don't really think that um, joining the military is necessarily the best idea at this point in time. I know you would, because Peacecraft, you unironically would love to live in the Starship Troopers movie world. Um, but yeah, but... But that's not true, though, Peacecraft. That's not true, Peacecraft. That's not true anymore. That really isn't true anymore. And I know I come from a military family. I can't serve in the military, nor can a lot of members of my chat, because uh, as it turns out, the military discriminates against you if you're trans. And they did if you were gay for a long time, too. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, your advice will fall on flat ears here for a lot of people, including obviously myself. I'm also an old, so I can't do that. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of the benefits that were previously associated with the, um, with signing up for the military have disappeared. Um, college benefits are significantly less. Um, yeah, but, but that's not entirely true, though, because, again, Peacecraft, you ignore a lot of the systemic problems that are in the military. Like, for example, um, women in the military have a really bad time. I don't know if you all knew this, and I know we're getting off, um, we're getting off on a little bit of a tangent here about why we should care about the military being involved, involved in video games, but that's kind of important. But the military doesn't exactly have the best, um, environment for women who are enlisted and in fact the rates of sexual assault in the military are through the motherfucking roof it's actually actually terrifying um and uh yeah so um i really don't recommend women join the military um yeah, but the the problem is is that that's about all they're willing to do and they're not willing to take action against higher ranking members and they often cover it up huge problem. Uh, no, it hasn't. As it turns out, it's still really, really bad because they don't actually take any tangible action about it. So now we've got some basic info on, uh, I don't think I need to spend a whole lot of time talking about why military influence in, um, in video games is bad, but let's talk about a couple such examples. The most recent one that I can think of is, um, the, uh, army, the Twitch army account. Um, I think some of you have heard about this. Uh, the surfs, um, was, um, was trolling them quite a lot with they had they had an emote that said war crimes um that they would go and post on the army twitch chat um because the army was using its twitch page to recruit people and to hype up the military which is really fucked if you think about it a state agency getting preferential treatment on twitch and they did get preferential treatment um on twitch which we'll talk about that in a second um but uh, they got preferential treatment on Twitch to get bumped to the front page, pull in lots of young people, offer them a, a Xbox, a free Xbox, if they consider signing it up. Um, signing up, which was a scam, mind you. It actually didn't give them anything. It just linked to them where, to where they could uh, enlist. That's pretty fucked. And keep in mind, a lot of these players were playing games like... Uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a game that has, in the past, notoriously partnered with the military for promotion. Yeah, competition with no reward. Or was it an Xbox Pro controller? It was just a controller? Holy shit, I didn't even realize that. I thought it was a, a an Xbox Pro that they were giving away. Yeah, yeah. Listen, there's nothing wrong with military shooters, but the fact of the matter is that a lot of military shooters have been have been funded in part thanks to the military. Um there there is um there let me let me give you an example of this. Um what's it called? Uh Call of Duty. Yeah, here we go. Let's let's just pop into here real quick. I think this is the article I was thinking of. 
The Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Highway of Death controversy explained, Infinity Ward's latest game shines a light on the American military's uncomfortable history in the Middle East. When Call of Duty Modern Warfare launched in late October, Russian consumers cried foul in large numbers. Most were reacting to the simple fact that the game portrays their country's soldiers as little more than faceless henchmen. But alongside that patriotic response came a pointed assertion. The developers at Infinity Ward, at Infinity Ward appear to be papering over a controversial bit of the United States military history. Uh-oh. There's no professional Xboxes? Fair. The mission in question is called the Highway of Death, and it takes place about midway through the game's second act. In the real world, the Highway of Death is also the name given to a section of the road just outside of Kuwait City, Kuwait, an open stretch of land that became the site of what some to believe to be genuine war crimes committed by the American military. How is the Highway of Death portrayed in modern warfare? Modern Warfare's campaign weaves together a number of storylines, including one that shows a member of the CIA embedding within a group of freedom fighters in the fictional Middle East country of Ur Urzikstan. D during the level in question, the leader of the rebels briefs the CIA officer on the terrain they'll be using to set up an ambush. If they try to escape to the mountains, she says, there's only one road, the Highway of Death. The Russians bombed it during the invasion, killing people trying to escape. Hmm... Hmm. Weird. Wait a minute. Wasn't it the um, Americans? Oh, the Americans were the ones who bombed the road. But in the game, they said it was the Russians. Uh-oh. Stinky. Yeah, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Um, I wonder. I wonder. That's so strange. Let's keep reading and see if there's anything else in here. The rebel leader's description of the area as a highway of death is almost a throwaway line in the greater narrative of modern warfare. What's pertinent, however, is how much of the game vilifies the, por the forces who gave it that name. It's a climactic battle, and the first time that the player truly begins to spill Russian blood in large quantities in the game. It all leads up to revenge against the fictional Russian general Roman Barkov. In the game's narrative, he's the man responsible for creating the highway of death and for using forced labor, torture, summary executions, chemical weapons to punish people in the region. In the pursuit of making Barkov out to be an almost cartoonish villain, it all tracks with what modern warfare's narrative. What stands out with the Highway of Death mission is the use of the phrase Highway of Death itself. Even a cursory Google search brings back results that are directly at odds with modern warfare's effort here to cast Western forces as the heroes and the Russians as the villains and the optics, including partnering with ex-American military to create the game, are poor for the team at Infinity Ward and its publisher, Activision. Let's see what they have here. Call of Duty is always hey, here we go. a sort of a window into a world that you would only see uh, on the news. It had to do service. Oh to, wait, to I can't watch world. this because this is gonna get fucking slapped by uh by Washington Post. God, wait, wait, can I? I guess I can. Fuck it. And it couldn't just be Hollywood depiction. We're working. With We're gonna react to it. Our Navy SEAL consultants, and they were training. Navy SEAL consultants. They hired. Navy SEAL consultants to train the motion actors. Training our actors, training our animators, and training our designers how they move realistically through spaces. We're not trained operators, obviously, although we try to be as immersed in that world as we possibly can. But we were still operating under the pretense that you, you kick down a door and you say, everybody throw your hands up and you just come in with shock and awe. And our operators were like, well, we don't do anything like that. Our operators. Our operators. So let me just, let's just point out something here. Do you think that a game like Call of Duty would be able to tell the true story and still maintain their partnership? It's a little weird, isn't it? It's a little weird that it's conditional, right? It's kind of weird. They, they make a game that promotes American propaganda, blames the Russians directly for American war crimes. And then, oh, hey, yeah, sure. You can have some of our Navy SEAL guys to help make your game more awesome. Sure. Pretty sus. That's pretty weird, isn't it? Yeah, let's keep, let's keep watching and see what else there is to find out about this. Because this is actually kind of interesting. They send us in to find it. For us, the challenge of it was, if we want this game to be authentic and realistic and not um, 
a kind of a cliched Hollywood Lol. depiction of Lol. lore, then we've got to ask them, what are some themes that are universal to your experience? Sometimes, Dadel, but there's still a lot of people. Justice to in our game. Imagine talking about doing justice to a narrative when you literally lie about who performed a war crime. In partnership, mind you, in partnership with the United States military. Weasley fucking liars. It's completely unrealistic. Two, two military consultants? <laughs> the biggest thing we got off right off the bat was the, the main focus of the game was authenticity and to make, hmm. um, to create uh, an environment where the player feels like he's actually in the environment. In this particular game, uh, we got brought in from infancy, I mean, we, from, the, from the start. I started with the story. You know, is that something that's real? And then if so, how would we, how might we do it? So when we're oh, having true, those discussions, yeah. kind of 100%, middle, creatively, true. you know, they come out with something and it's, we, we listen to We it. wanted to create a game where you can authentically reenact war crimes, but blame them on the people who didn't actually do them in real life. Wow. Literal propaganda. We would watch it and we're like, okay, that would never happen. And so, but then, you know, we, we have these month or months long discussions and try to, again, meet in the middle. So, you know, we're trying to make it authentic they're trying to make it entertaining and authentic and we, we finally whittle it down to something that we can both live with target is in the main house you have execute authority we basically have them on speed dial we ask them questions all the time we, we basically have military consultants on speed dial yeah hmm it's a little weird huh Damn, it's almost like the military is giving a lot of support to these games that do unque unquestioned apologetics for their actions in the Middle East. It's a little strange, huh? That's a little, that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit of a cringe mama, if you ask me. We run scripts by them. Oh, I'm um, sure he does. We ask them about different types of terminology. All states do this type of propaganda. Logic. It has to make sense. It has to be characters have that we're portraying would be actually motivated by the thing they're going after. Well, the way the characters look in the game, gear, equipment, um, the way they move. We took some of the developers out to the range. Some of them hadn't shot guns before. So we wanted, you know, their goal was to, you know, hold a gun, shoot a gun safely, and mine the experience from that, the recoil, the flash, so that they can begin to inject that into the game. Now the guys that actually design the guns. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. That's what's a little bit sinister about these things, is that at the end of the day, all of this authenticity is in service of making gun go bang cool and not in telling the truth. They slip those propaganda in and the American military benefits from this because if they have a bunch of kids playing games where the American military is presented as unequivocal heroes and bang, go shoot, flash, fun, well, turns out it's a lot easier to sell membership in the military if you're willing to invest in that. And when you have billions of dollars, oh, there's an easy solution. Don't allow the military to to um to work with game companies like this. Yeah, you you don't do it. You say that's totally inappropriate and an abuse of state power. Now, of course though, we have a problem, which is that our state doesn't care. But we can fix that hopefully in the long run. We can recognize that this represents um a very inappropriate relationship. Yeah, of course it doesn't care. But that doesn't mean that that's all the only type that it can. Well, that's not necessarily true. I mean, I do agree that there are some leftist governments that wouldn't. Yeah, they do this all the time. Well, but having a vested interest in having a military doesn't mean that any, like, a st okay, well, of course, I do believe there's huge problems with hierarchical states. But uh, even a state that has a military doesn't necessarily have to be a state that is, um, m that is motivated by... Uh, pure military supremacy. America is notably jingoistic. Like, ridiculously jingoistic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I should probably change the title of the stream real quick. Let me just change it. Um, Weasley? Wait, let's see here. American infiltrating video games. There we go. Bam. Um, no, I disagree with that. Um, no, I, I don't think that that's a fair thing to say, Peacecraft. I, I don't think so. You can't even say that. That's just nonsensical. 
NDs for all retired service people. Well, listen, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with retired service people. Um, well, I don't think, I would assume that some of them are. Like those two older guys are definitely retired military, but the Navy SEALs they brought in aren't. So there's, um, no, 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 that's, no. There's an active genocide going on in our country, Peacecraft. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you fucking kidding me? Did you know that it's possible to say, hey, these hege hegemon, this hegemony is bad and we should fight against it? Including in America? And not just go, yeah, I guess our evil empire that I personally benefit from is the one that should be in charge. Come on. There's no, there never was a clear answer. We've always done this shit. Oh, uh, always, Rakasan, always. Of course, always. That's why we have the badge. We had countless discussions with them. Hey! Thank you so much! Hey, am the money tree right now. Take my money. Yay, Tree Dad! Thank you so very much! Uh, you will now have a very shiny new name as soon as the site updates it and it'll pop up on chat. Thank you so very much for the tier two subscription. Amazing. It means the world. This show is made possible because, literally, because of viewers like you. So thank you so much. Um, what do I think about like a global regime type type thing? Like we're all together? Oh, you mean like a, like a, like, well, I mean, it would depend on the structure, right, Pukes? Um, it would depend, just depend really strongly on the structure. Um, I think that, that we have to acknowledge that we are a global society. Like Earth, like human society is no longer nationalistic. We are global. We are global. Um, yeah, that's why I do it. Um, it's under my kilt. It's a reference from a long time ago. We all talked about how much we loved, um, how much we loved PBS and those messages made you feel based and how I want to carry that forward because it is true. This stream is made possible because of y'all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aw, see, it always gets good reviews. That's why I'm going to keep doing it. And yeah, um, it is, it is true. And I miss that. I miss viewers knowing how much they make it possible for me to do things because you guys do make it possible. I get on here every day to hang out with y'all and to make content for you, to entertain you, um, and to banter back and forth with y'all. That's why I do it. And the money makes it possible for me to keep doing that because yeah, it lets me buy food and drink and everything like that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Anyway, let's get back to this. How does that, re does that recoil look right? You know, some, in some cases in the beginning, it was too much or too little and we tweak it. Does the muzzle flash look right? Bang, bang, cool. Does loading the weapon bang. make sense here? It's impossible to decouple the mechanics of a game from the narrative of the game. Hmm. And so in the same way that we were hmm. working really closely with our military advisors and they were giving us tactical advice, we also yeah, took right, Tony from them for the thematic subjects of the game. The reason why they have those tactics is because frankly, they don't know what's on the other side of that door. And so to try to decouple the narrative from the gameplay would have been would have been a mistake. I, I've always said that it's, in, it's in, just as important to know when not to pull the trigger as to know when to pull the trigger. There's a lot of shoot, no shoot. So there's- How frequently in Call of Duty do you not shoot? <laughs> Let's be honest. But maybe that's a good question for the American military too. <laughs> Hey, Paul, thanks for the follow. So there's a lot of those moral decisions that the player's going to have to make. Throughout. Wow. Wow. Hey, thanks for the follow, Tony Baloney. Happy to have you. Um, also, anyone who's hanging out in Twitch chat, feel free to come hang out on the site. We have a site. That's where all of these things come from. You get access to all kinds of cool emotes, and you get to hang out with us on the site. Um, so yeah, and you can sign in with Twitch, so feel free to come over. I'm, I'm, pro I'm promoting it a lot. Please bear with me, but I want people to come join my site and come hang out with us. Yeah, <laughs> how frequently in any FPS do I not shoot? Anyway, I, I just wanted to take a second and hang on that, uh, moral decisions. Oh yeah, um, Metal Gear Solid probably, but that's a different type of game. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, people are cuter when you're in the site chat because you can do stuff like this. Look. You can make a hug appear on the screen. You can make a 
um, a, a whole bunch of really cute stuff pop up on the screen. You can make this horrifying face pop up on the screen if you want to. Very nice. A shoot, no shoot. So there's a, there's a lot of those moral decisions. A lot of those player. moral decisions. What do you mean? What moral decision is even in Call of Duty? Let's be honest. Uh, do I want to use my uh, white phosphorus kill streak now or my white phosphorus kill streak later? Should I drop the napalm on the enemy's team? Hmm. Wait, you are at work? Oh my god. Holy shit. You're discussing that at work? How relevant. That makes me feel good. I'm sorry, what's your question, RoboDog? This one? Oh, you like that one? Oh, this stream. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brink. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean brick? What's your question? What's your question? Do you understand what that is? A que question? Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but I just, I, I'm trying to get your question. What's your question? Um, I love this one too. Yeah. Listen. Um, yeah. I'm red. Am I red? I'm red. Who's red? Wait, me? No, only one gets to be red. Only one. Me. Okay. Bye-bye. That was easy. No, I'm red. I'm red. Here we go. Oh, if you want purple, you got to do a tier four sub, I think. Let me double check. Hold on. I can tell you. I can tell you what the purple color is. There's a purple color. Let me just tell you real quick. Purple color. If you want to be purple, you got to be a tier four sub. And then you get the arch demon title and you get a purple sub. Fancy. So why is it? Why is, why is, I'm wondering, hold on a second here. Hold on just a second here. Why is Grime Dango showing up as blue still? Grime Dango, you're supposed to be orange. You're supposed to be orange. Oh, it's because I made you a moderator. That's why. Well, you can be a moderator still. I think it's because I made you a VIP. Here we go. I'm making you that color. There we go. You now have a better color. Better color. Yay. Oh, uh, was it a Gundam reference? Oh, whatever. They were annoying me. I don't care. One person, one random person annoying me in Twitch chat is nothing new to me, unfortunately. All right, let's continue talking about it. You're gonna have to make throughout the game. And it also brings a lot of realism to it. You know, you just can't get away with just going into a room and shooting every single person in the room. This is crazy. Get down! Yeah, but we're a little crazy, aren't we? And they said over and over again, we are expected to go into imperfect situations and operate perfectly. And that is the that is the oh, burden okay. that we carry. Well, maybe I was and too mean the to them. That we would Here, like I'll unban the them then. To know to not utilize wow. these consultants that have been there on the ground that are from these places would be a big omission. And I think that the project is a lot better for them. That's the mission. There we go. I, I probably shouldn't have banned, banned them. Yeah, okay, so um, so yeah, that about says it all, right? Um, you, you get the, uh, you get the, um, you get the uh, moral decision of, yeah, just so you know, and, and just before we start, you know, getting too far into it, just, just so you know. Here we go. Watch this. Let me just, let me just show you. Here you go. Here is a little, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Here's a great video. We could, here we go. White phosphorus is a military munition that can be used. Hey, how perfect! Let's watch this together. It's a highly effective smoke-producing agent and is most commonly found in smoke grenades or shells on mounted grenade launchers and armored vehicles and tanks as a method to quickly deploy smoke screens. Uh, no panel However, tonight. We were on one earlier. Is also a phyrophonic, which yeah, means self-igniting substance. It's a picket sign. It a highly effective incendiary weapon that burns quickly through cloth, skin, fuel, and ammunition. The substance is. You hear that? Let's put on the closed captions. 
lethal in two major ways. The first is burning. During the compound's initial explosion, it casts off incandescent particles that, if they land on your skin, will continue to burn through your flesh right into your wow. bones. Wow! To make wow. things worse, the particles have a tendency to stick to skin, and without being depraved of oxygen, they'll continue to burn. However, wow. it gets much worse. As the chemical burns, it also absorbs into your body from the burn site, causing heart and kidney damage, which can lead to total organ failure. Incredible. So even if the burns don't kill you, the chemical absorption might. The second way white phosphorus is lethal is through smoke inhalation. It produces dense hot smoke that irritates the eyes, nose, and throat. What's more is that the heat of the smoke will cause internal burning when you breathe it in. A former US soldier told the BBC in an interview that, quote, breathing in smoke close to a shell caused the throat and lungs to blister until the victim suffocated with the phosphorus continuing to burn them from the inside. So, yeah, you guys get it, right? You got y'all get it. Y'all get it, right? Chat, you get it. I don't think we need to watch much more of that, right? That is a kill streak in Call of Duty. Yeah, that's right. You are incentivized to use you are you are you are incentivized to use this thing against your enemies in Call of Duty. Don't believe me? Watch this. Let me just show you. Maybe we can find a little video of it. That'd be cool if we could if we could find a video of it. Uh, where is the where the hell is it? Is this the one? No, these are all too long. Maybe this is one. Let's see. Here we go. Let's watch. Let's see if they've got it in this one. I think somebody gets it in this one. Let's let's jump forward a little bit. I don't want to see all their stupid bullshit. Where is it? Here we go. There you go. There's the option right there on the screen. White phosphorus. Hey, pick where you want to drop it. Ah, yeah, we'll get him. We'll get him with the war crime. We'll get him with the illegal thing that is literally not used because it's too cruel. Yeah, casual war crimes. Fun. There you go. Look, it's all over the place. And if and you can hear everyone coughing. Hear him? Can you hear him? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, no. The the question here, Paul's bog, is um, is uh, the question here is 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 we're discussing problematic elements of U.S. military involvement in Call of Duty, and this is sort of an extension of it. Um, not just Call of Duty, but video games. Um, in the the U.S. military is involved in video games all the time, and um. Well, maybe they don't say it outright. I don't know. We don't know what happens behind closed doors. Um, it's funny that the games that they um, participate in whitewash the United States. They whitewash the crimes of the United States. And these are in games that they sell themselves as, oh, we take into consideration the moral considerations. In a game that's about playing more or less as United States soldiers and killing enemies of the United States and also incentivizes you you getting points to use war crimes on people and and this is not to say that like violent video games are bad this isn't to say that um using terrifying weapons in video games is bad i mean for example i fucking love um i fucking love doom 2016 a game in which you chainsaw the shit out of people like literally just rip them apart with a chainsaw um yeah oh oh that's true yeah game gameling christie it's not it isn't surprising yet almost all war games are about the u.s being the good guys that are suffering yeah that's true so yeah there's some issues there there's some big issues that are going on with that and i think that we should be way more critical of the military's involvement in video games uh, especially games which do shit like this um, a game that in its storyline lies about the of what lies about what the US did they blame something the US did on Russia and then also they glorify the use 
of illegal weapons, which have been used by the United States. So, yeah. It's a little weird. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the follow, Weekly Winter. Hey, um, now that you're following on Twitch, consider coming and joining the website. We have our very own DemonMama.com website. If you like my stuff, you can come hang out with my lovely community and get access to all kinds of cool emotes. I'm plugging it a lot because we just launched the site. So, yeah. The TF2 lore? I don't know TF2 lore. Yeah. Hey, Weekly. Yeah. Um, well... I appreciate, I'm glad that you agree with it. I think there's a lot to talk about. Another thing that before we jump off, um, um, well, no, Dital Dan, I don't think I would be fine with it if it was the exact same propaganda, um, with no direct military involvement. Um, however, let's be honest there. It does change the context. Um, there's all kinds of propaganda that's involved, but when you get the endorsement of the military, not only, um, does that boost that propaganda's you know, credibility, but it also influences the creators. Do you think that the creators are more likely to write a story that's critical of the United, or not even critical, that's honest about the United States involvement in the Middle East if the U.S. Army is involved in helping you make that game better? Yeah, it's just worse. Hey, Weekly Winter, welcome to the site. We're so happy to have you. Look at this. Everybody, let's welcome all the newcomers with these pompos. Yay! Get some pompos in there. Amazing. Yeah. So it's like, it is worse. I, I think that there's, here's the thing. Um, people make propagandistic and jingoistic movies all the time and we can critique those, but games where, um, but games where they're being also endorsed by the U S military is really questionable and it gets weirder too. This is where it gets even weirder. Um, let me just show you this real quick. Um, let me just get the uh, the info up here. I didn't really have this part um, prepared. So just p bear with me for one second while I get the info. Um, spoon with a spoon. Where is it? What's it called? Uh, it, it's... Uh, what's the U.S. Army Esports? Is it called U.S. Army Esports? Yeah, U.S. Army Esports on Twitch. Where is their Twitch? What's the actual name of their Twitch channel? Uh, here, let me just see if I can find it. It's the U.S. Army Esports channel. What, did they not? Did they, did they get rid of their Twitch channel? No, they didn't. Where's their fucking Twitch channel? What's it called? Is it called U.S. Army Esports? Sorry, I, again, I didn't prepare for this, so apologies um, for me struggling to find this real quick. U.S. Army Esports. There it is. Here it is. This is the one. Here we go. And I'm just going to bring this up on loud. Here we go. Let me just show you something. Here we go. All right. So they haven't streamed in a while, but let's go and see if we can get, wait a minute. Did they purge their stuff from Selenome? <gasps> Did they purge their shit from Selenome? Those little sneaks. Holy shit. No. Wait a minute. Ho hold on just a second. Social Blade can do Twitch, right? Yeah, it does. Let's see if we can find them on here. Oops. Ah, <laughs> here we go. All right. So let's see if we can find their Twitch info. Where's their, this is their YouTube, right? This is their, this is their YouTube. How do I get their Twitch? Let's find it. This is, uh, yeah. U.S. Army Esports Twitch. That should be their Twitch one. Let me see. Detailed statistics. Let's take a look. So, let me see if I can find week weekly video views. This is their overall video views. Okay, yeah, take a look at this. Take a look at this. Yeah, I think their Twitch does exist. It's just, um, it's very weird. Maybe they did shadow ban them. It, you used to be able to get detailed info on Selling Gnome, and it was great. But look at this even. We can even take a look at this. Total video views. Um, starting in 2019, oh, this is, no, this is the one right here. This is their video views, 18 video views, 38 video views, 52 video views. 
uh, 66 video views, 58 video views. And then it starts to spike up over here. This is when we're approaching when they were featured on the front page. Maybe change YouTube to, to Twitch in the U. In, oh, oops. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. Oh, I wonder. Maybe they. Oh, here it is. This is this is where I can do that. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Let's see if we can find their stats. Maybe they purged their stats from Twitch. Ah, okay. Here we go. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. So you can see right here. So you have their streams. Their average video views are like 66. Now, just so you know, um, just so you know, um, this, this particular thing, we, our channel, we can look at my channel on here and we'll compare it side by side. Um, this is like, this is something that, um, Chud did this. So credit goes to Chud for discovering this information. But, uh, let me just bring up mine real quick here. Let me just duplicate this and we'll bring up us. There we go. Oh, mine haven't been published yet. Oh, listen, we can do mine on Sully Gnome. I know I'm on Sully Gnome. Here we go. So now I wish that I could compare same, the same sites. Unfortunately, it's very weird. U.S. Army Esports is no longer has their data available on Sully Gnome, which is very weird. Very, very weird. This was all available before. I've seen this before. We've looked at this on stream at one point before. But we'll have to go our best here. Look at their average views. Their average video views, 66, 53, 45, 42, up to 520, up to 1,248. Uh, um, this, they got featured multiple times. And if you looked previously, um, you can look at their Sully Gnome. It, I don't know why it's not available anymore, but previously you could tell they were a 12 viewer Andy. They were, they got less viewers than us until they got featured and whenever they were featured they would jump up to like a thousand viewers they got partner they got partner despite never actually meeting the partnership requirements so this is another element where these sort of problematic um as we can see the involvement of the u.s military um it can be really problematic and totally fucks with the marketplace and this is a military this is a state organization that is going into spaces, targeting children. Yeah, they lost a bunch of followers. Yeah. I mean, it could be. I don't know. This is a, this is the thing, Paul. We don't have these things. A lot of this information is not available publicly. It happens behind closed doors. So we don't know what's happening. Um, huh. Are you tempted to get featured on the front page? Oh, I would love to get featured on the front page. That'd be huge. Um, but it's hard to do that. It's, it's difficult to do that. I don't think you have, I don't think you could pay it. I think they have to approach you. Um, as far as I understand it, Twitch has to approach you. Um, yeah, the scam they did for an Xbox controller. Um, yeah, you, yeah, people followed so they could win an Xbox. And then when people found out it was a lie, they unfucking followed. Yeah, it's wild. But that's the thing. These, these sort of, um, fucked up incentives the united states military goes on these places to target young people to get them in the military it's very manipulative and in my opinion it's way out of line um like we can even if you believe and i have my problems with the um existence of the american military as it currently stands it is a huge massive um organization that does a lot of harm um but even if you believe, you know, that you need to have a robust military, you can put limits on that military. You can say, hey, it's not okay for the state to be targeting children using video games to get them excited about joining the military. Yeah. Um, yeah, the military-industrial con complex. Exactly. The military-industrial complex is alive and well absolutely and they are able to use their incredible power and influence to to elicit disinformation and and propaganda that is just wrong yeah so it, it's really it's really fucked just like aoc considering us to vote for the democrats well it's not even the not even close to the same thing i would argue well i don't really think that's quite the same thing um, I do think there's maybe some questions you could have about the fact that AOC is currently a representative and um, 
therefore has some advantage. There's some parasocial elements that you could talk about with that. Hey, thanks for the follow, Saberwolf1001. Happy to have you. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's like, it, it's pretty rough. Like, th so there are some questions that you could have there. Um, about, yeah, maybe she's using something, but this is the military. This is an organization, the armed wing of the of the United States that is going in and using, not not just having a presence on Twitch, they're having a, pr a preferred presence on Twitch. They're getting boosted to the top. They're playing games that they were heavily involved in the creation of and that which glorify American war, um, war presence that literally lie about American war crimes. And then... They use that as a recruiting base. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I was just, I felt like I, we should address it because it is, there are some honest questions in there. I think there are some some possible problems. I don't think there's a huge problem with it, but I think there are some problems. And nobody's ever, unfortunately, not a lot of people. Some people have. Some people have heard of the SRA. Um, but yeah, I uh, I don't hate you, Weekly Winner. We're not particular. We're not that, that overreactive in general on this one. But, uh, you know, listen. To wrap up this segment about extremely problematic involvement of the American military in the video game world um, and, and how much they absolutely failed, let's just take a quick look here. Let's, let's, let's just look. Ready? Hey, who's that? Hey, it's me. Look at this. We're up to 58 average viewers. You all have made, have actually made it possible for me to grow. We're outpacing the U.S. military. We are whooping the military's butt on Twitch. And that's because of y'all. Y'all are these viewers here. So just saying, this followers thing, ignore this. This isn't accurate. This is because of the bots. This is not accurate. Hours watched, however, is accurate. Views gained is accurate. Hours streamed, 38. Oh, I've streamed 38 hours over the last 14 days. Oh God, I've been streaming so much, but I love it. So no worries. Um, peak viewers, 127. Average viewers, 58. You all have turned me into a 58 viewer Andy. So thank you very much for that. It means the world to me. Yeah, we're winning the guerrilla Twitch warfare. That's what we're doing. Look at that. Boom. Look at all that. Well, that's the bot, so don't ignore don't look at that one. Look at this one. Brrrap, growing. We are growing. And that's awesome. And I love you all for that. So thank you. No parasocial, you know, but I do care very much about you. Yeah, 58 viewer Andra. Andrea. And and NB. 58 viewer NB. There we go. That's a good one. Hey, sick. Weekly winter. Happy to have you. Um I am I am largely here. Thanks to Mr. Vouch as well. Um, um, after all, uh, it was uh, getting to talk to Vosh that inspired me uh, to actually take a try at, at uh, streaming. So, yeah, 